Okay, so we are uh, here. It's Monday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we're going to make some pop music. See how this goes. Uh, I'm going to try to start doing this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday when I can. Uh, which, for the most part, will be every week. Unless I have like a uh, an early lesson or something in the morning. So, I'm still kind of getting the hang of uh, streaming audio from Ableton and my microphone at the same time, uh, and video, so if anything sounds really screwed up, please let me know. Uh, there's a slight chance um, we will start drifting into chipmunk territory because I have drift correction turned off for Soundflower, which I think was causing the sample rate to, um, to drift upwards a little bit, so I'll be checking on that now and then. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So this is a uh, whoa. this is a little melody I kind of wrote like this morning. Uh, I thought we'd start with this um, with kind of an EDM pop feel going. Uh, this is just the, uh, like a piano playing the melody, really basic, but uh, gives you kind of an idea of where I'm going with it. So I have, I want that chorus to sound really big, and that's that's usually where I start. Is a nice, huge hook for the chorus. Um, there's nothing better to start with than a, a super saw. Uh, I use Serum for 99.9% .9 of my synths now. Uh, I was using Massive for years, but pretty much as soon as Serum came out became the better option. Um, I have a second camera today showing my uh, my keyboard situation too, so that's nice. Um, now let's just start messing around with some chords. And we'll just start with whole notes. See how this goes. I think that was the chords I wrote earlier. quantization because I'm lazy. And I like to get a big, huge sound as soon as possible, um, just so I feel like I don't lose momentum. Uh, and for that, we need a big kick drum. Uh, the This is from Native Instruments Battery. Uh, I pretty much, this is this is just the battery samples folder. Um, I find myself using these kicks over everything else, like 99% of the time. I only do a little bit of color, color coding, uh, cause I am like really colorblind, <laughs> so it doesn't help me that much.
Uh, so that'll give us just a nice kick. And we will immediately sidechain that to our super saw. Because this is EDM, and legally speaking, all super saws must be sidechained. bass next and this will be two separate tracks one playing uh, just a simple sub bass and the other playing a more complex kind of gritty gritty kind of sound I uh, might go with the monster wavetable which I just recently learned was made by uh, seamless the streamer I didn't realize any of uh, pretty much this entire spectral um, thing was made by Seamless, uh, which is awesome because they're really, really good. Uh, so we will sidechain this one pretty hard, but we will probably lay off the sub bass one uh, a bit more. Let's see. And for this uh, sub bass, we can just use operator because it's nice and light on my CPU. Because uh, my CPU is not happy that I'm streaming and producing music at the same time, but it can deal with it. And that's really simple. That's all the sub bass is doing. I'm going to group these guys together. clipping a little bit. I have to remember the stream can't handle as much volume as my speakers can. So you can hear just how much the uh, the sub bass is doing in that situation. Here's that that full bass sound. Here's without the sub. And in fact, we're gonna cut a little bit of the lows out of our uh, 
of our main gritty bass there, just uh, just to really make sure the sub bass is the only thing contributing to the extreme low end. And I'm just going to do that with a really simple high pass filter around like 100, 150. That's about where I'm going to leave that. And uh, we're going to do the same to our super saw and make sure um, make sure it's not interfering with the sub bass either. Oh, is that the one I put? Wait, what? <laughs> okay. onto the super saw here. So what I'm doing here is I am uh, automating the how detuned this upper octave is with an LFO curve. Uh, so you'll hear as uh, each half note goes by, each two beats, uh, it gets progressively more detuned, and you'll see that on this knob here. Just adds a little bit more life to what's going on here. Cool. Uh, so this is our stupid generic EDM chorus so far. Uh, now, keep in mind, we are writing music for television right now. Um, which means I don't, I don't want to say I'm trying to write soulless pop music, but, uh, but it does need to be very accessible, very easy to use in any situation, and, um, but still have the general vibe of what's going on in today's Top 40 music. Uh, and... This allows for a lot of fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to drop some white noise in here. Uh, I'm actually turning back to my battery samples again. And I have a noise folder here. I found these are just a little more organic than uh, just using white noise from like operator or something. kind of cool. <laughs> Vacuum. That might work. Yeah, this water noise, if I high pass that. Um, I'm going to pitch this up just a little bit. Now let's see how this sounds in context. Uh, I'm just going to flatten that. Uh, this is Little Microshift. This is a Sound Toys plugin. 
I think they gave this away for free like five or six years ago, and I've had this ever since. And I've since bought the entire Sound Toys line because I love literally everything they make. Um, Sound Toys makes amazing stuff. Uh, but my first choice, uh, if, if I had to recommend any plugins, uh, is always Serum. And then if you can pick up Native Instruments Complete for cheap online, like I bought a used copy uh, of like Complete 8, I think, a few years back. And then have since just upgraded from that. So I haven't even, I don't think I've even spent the cost of like Complete 11 Ultimate yet. Uh, I've upgraded every step of the way every year. Um, so buy, buy used if you can. Let's see how that sits in the mix. Here's without that. That's nice. It just has a little top end shimmer. Uh, so there's our track. Uh, now let's get this melody back in here. Uh, I've already kind of forgotten how it goes. And for this, um, listening to a lot of Zed lately, um, chorus lead. Uh, we'll probably change the rhythm on that super saw to make it more interesting, but I just needed something I can write to for now. And there's going to be a lot of pitch bending in this lead. So we'll give us some room there. And I'm going to start with a really tightly detuned super saw. But we have I have some other fun stuff in mind. I just want to get this melody down first. see my keyboard um, all right let's try tracking this see how this goes have to simplify this a little bit it's a little uh this part in the middle with the ba 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 it's a little complicated i feel like for this kind of music um i'm just gonna try i'm just gonna sketch on piano for a second we'll see how this goes
Okay, it is going to end up sounding nothing like that. Uh, there will be a lot of chopping up stuff in here. Um, but we got to get the MIDI in there somehow. Okay, let's start screwing around with this lead. I'm just putting in little pitch bends here to add some fun to the lead. go and it's going to be a really similar and we'll just copy over the pitch envelope and see what happens there we go i will grab this working out really well. <laughs> uh, I just want to change a couple things about this. So that's a really good start for our lead. Uh, I need to compress this a little bit. Do some side chaining. Uh, and this is about the part where I'm going to start setting up my reverb and delay. I always use Valhalla Vintage Verb for everything, because it's the best. Uh, I really like the plate mode. Oop. Okay. Sorry, looks like the stream cut out for a second there. Okay. And
and let's get Valhalla up and running. Send some of the lead there. And some of that super saw. Cool. And just a little bit of the lead portion of the bass. Cool. And let's see what that gets us. Okay. That's getting there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try some rhythmic stuff here with the synths. I'm going to try first cutting off on four for everything, like. Easier just to re record this actually. Save it just in case this goes horribly wrong. Sloppy keyboard mess ups. Quantize down to quarter notes. And I'm just going to do the same to this bass. It's not my bass. chords, right? Okay. And again, going to quantize down to quarter notes. And what about a little snare hit or something? Some kind of... Not that. Anything but that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not finding anything in there. Um, what's this? Nothing like that either. I think I'm just going to grab a snare. Uh, or... Yeah, I just like the arena snares a lot. Uh, it's the same kick kit I got the uh, the kick drum from. And we're gonna use two snares, and we're gonna alternate between them. Just for fun. Cool. 
little bit of compression on that. Get rid of the melody for a second so we can focus on what's actually going on back here. Okay, I'm going to cut this noise on 4-2 just to really get oops, everything out of the way. Snares repeat. Cool. Uh, I'm feeling like this needs a little more motion. And a good way to do that is always um, some hi-hats. Looks like the stream's cut out again. I'm not sure why. Okay. This is my little uh, trap hi hats. Uh, I'm just gonna go to my launch pad here, which I've got set up right here. Lovely. Um, and because I set it up with using the launch pad in mind. Uh, let's see. Sure, we really cut off on four on all of those because I'm really sloppy at the launch pad. Quantize down to eighth notes and uh, see how that sits in there. <laughs> Now let's work on making this lead uh, good, because <laughs> right now it's not. It's a really boring lead sound. So is that. one layer. Uh, we'll call that rave lead. And we're going to just steal the MIDI from it. And uh, do serum on this as well. 
Uh, and this is, this is a lead I really like to do. This is a, uh, it's not going to be really heavily unisoned. Um, just use a couple voices. But what is really cool is automating the pitch really, really rapidly. Not like that. <laughs> So by, I'm really, really quickly oscillating the pitch back and forth with this, and uh, makes for, this is like the, um, I figured this out when I was trying to rip off the uh, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites lead, that little, uh, you know, oh man, it's not even going to play now, you know, you know the one. So we can do that. I can duplicate it up an octave. There we go. And where that went, we're going to kill that lead. <laughs> I'd say 90% of music production is making garbage, and then 10% is uh, something that actually turns out awesome. We're somewhere around that first uh, 90%. <laughs> I don't like this monster sound. I might make something with some FM. Uh, let's go back to, let's just go back to an init preset. This is something else I really like to do. Um, FM in a sine wave, an octave down from a saw wave. You get this really gross subby sine wave, saw wave thing. And we can kind of LFO that a little. Not like that. Sounds nice. You could do a lot with that stuff.
starting to sound like music. sound like without this fourth hit how would that sound like garbage <laughs> some more space in that lead Let's see if that makes it less terrible Good. Okay. Stuff's feeling a little crowded. I just want to uh, take this mix from scratch. Where's my? Uh, get over there. Thank you. Cool, but oh, it's because it's not giving me my. There we go. It's like, man, this mix feels top heavy. That's because it wasn't actually uh, actually giving me any bass. snares 
Now that it feels like we have a little more space in this mix, I can go back to making this lead fit in a little better. Uh, see, that sounds really loud. I'm not taking this whole thing up an octave. The lazy way. So this has gone about as, as far as it's going to go today. I'm going to try a new idea. Uh, give me one second to set up a new session. Okay, and that is literally the only way I've figured out to get audio <laughs> through my mic into Ableton um, without it getting shut down when I solo stuff like this. Uh, yeah, that works. Glad I figured that out. Okay, so when I run out of synthesizer ideas, I turn to guitar ideas. So let's start there. All right, let's see how uh turn this down so you can see the guitar action. Um I don't know what kind of genre I'm feeling today. my guitar audio.
That's a fun, stupid riff. <laughs> I like fun, stupid guitar riffs. Same problem I had on Friday, which is that I don't have a guitar pick in the house. One second. There's always a guitar pick in the laundry machine. It's a universal fact. Okay. Let's record our stupid guitar riff. twice because double tracking everything is good why can't I hear this one Now we've, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, 
So we will use one of these as like a filtered intro guitar. Let me just uh, size these first. Nice. Cool. And we're going to go with a dead simple drum beat behind this. Um, I might use live drums for this. Well, live. Uh, as opposed to like the battery stuff. I'm going to start with the Chris Lord Alge hybrid kit in uh, Stephen Slate drums. Nice classic <laughs> drum library. This is what I use for any uh, if you've seen any of my like cover song videos, it's always, always <laughs> this kit because it's just the best sounding samples kit I have ever used. We're going to do a nice really straightforward drum loop. Can't go wrong with that. Except I should really, you know, put this on the hi-hat line. I might change it to electronic drums later, I don't know. And I want this faster. I want, we're going to do a synth bass. I am going to sample some live bass in a minute, uh, but we're going to start with a, a synth bass just to keep this really tight. Okay. I'm out of coffee. Upsets me. And it's going to be just playing the same line as the guitars. It's kind of 80s, and I like that. <laughs> uh, we're going to go with sort of a similar strategy, except I will low pass this. Uh, and I might just include the sub bass in this one. I'll probably change that later. I just want something to play with right now. I want to 
count off before we record. Okay, I feel much better about this one than the, than the pop tune we were doing before. I don't know what what was wrong with that one, but something was very wrong with the song we were trying to record before. Um, I just don't want that saw wave interfering with the sub bass over here. Cool. That sounds pretty cool. Just a nice little kind of arp chord thing going on up here. It's almost like a piano playing that line up there, but I wanted something less organic. That's starting to sound like music. Uh, except I think 
this drum set is giving it that 80s vibe. So we're going to take that out of the loop for a second, and I'm going to go back to my uh, more EDM kind of drums. Sounds terrible. Yeah, I'll just stick with these. Why do I not have any sound? Again, just playing in those hats live on my launch pad.
that. So that'll make a good verse. Uh, we'll call those verse guitars because I do want to use distorted guitars in the chorus. Uh, so let's get some of those. I kind of have a chorus in mind. Uh, my distortion amp sim of choice is bias right now, uh, though I do really like Native Instruments guitar rig too. Uh, I don't want to run this through my voice. I want the guitar. Okay. And you can get some really nice, very genty tones very quickly with this. Uh, most of my any like prog metal recording uh, is definitely done with bias, and it's usually just the tread plate thing with like literally nothing on. <laughs> today because I, I want to be able to actually sell this song to you know people <laughs> I love jazz um, I've already forgotten the course I had in mind <laughs> minor though to uh, lead back into the verse cool uh, we will duplicate that and do it again Tracking everything is a good idea. Except that was terrible. later uh, and now I need a guitar lead which I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with um, let's see uh, let's see how that sounds over top of it maybe some ideas will come to me while I'm playing play
it's not it's not really pop music. Um, hmm. I do like that motif though. Let's, let's just keep it simple with that and see what happens. Not simple. That wasn't simple. down an octave two for blending. Let's see what we can do with that. Uh, so these are our leads, lead guitar one and lead guitar two. And these are our rhythm guitars, RG one and two. I'm gonna group these, chorus rhythm guitars. And I'm going to group these into chorus lead guitars. And we're going to start off pretty much with the same drums as our verse. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. I really like sidechain distorted guitars. It's a really cool sound to me uh, that we you don't really hear a lot. But some of my like most licensed songs have all been like sidechain distorted guitars in the choruses, so I'm gonna stick with that. And I may make a separate chorus bass track eventually, but for now I'll uh, I'll just use the same one we had in the verse.
might actually use LFO tool instead of uh, actual side chaining. I just picked up LFO tool the other day and I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. quantize these guitars. Because this is pop music and I'm allowed to cheat. Carving out a little space for our lead. Our lead's going to go in this kind of area later, uh, between 1K and like 5K. Yeah, I am going to want a totally separate bass for the chorus because I hate the way that bass sounds in the um, in the chorus right now. Also hate the way that bass sounds, but we're gonna fix that. Get our leads in here, huh? Just getting guitar therapy. Oh, we get some synth therapy. Cool. Okay, so that sounds like garbage to begin with. We're going to fix that, though. First with a high pass. A little boost in the highs. A little bit of compression. And we're going to take LFO tool and throw it on there too, but we are going to back it off just a little bit because it's the lead. Cool. Uh, we're going to throw some ping pong away before the LFO tool. Give it just some stereo activity, but I still want it to get dipped by that LFO tool. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just gonna try something rhythmically here. Uh, I'll see if this works. I don't know if I like this. get a I'm just gonna do a really nice big scary super saw not scary pretty uh, you're not a what yeah I know what what why why can't I put serum there thank you figure out a sound for this in a second. Let's just get some sound in here, some MIDI. See, that's loud. I don't like loud at 10.30 a.m. That sounded like some future bass stuff. No future bass stuff. Maybe future bass stuff. I don't know. That's the chords. Okay. Cool. All right. That's starting to sound good. Uh, definitely LFO tool on this guy, and this will be really, really aggressive. Really aggressive, like all the way out. I might even want to automate a filter on that too. I don't know yet. Uh, let's see. hear almost like a little click of the chord at the beginning of the beat. Yeah, that's nice. a little more activity.
that's cool. Okay, see how that blends in. Terribly. <laughs> I'm taking out this window thing. Uh. almost like the feel I was going for with the first track we tried today. Uh, just got it better on the second try, that's all. To this I don't know uh, I am gonna add vintage limiter this is my instantaneously make the track a little bit better plug in Okay, now that's now that's feeling better. Let's uh, send that straight to the direct out. Good. Okay, uh, so that that feels good. I like that. You like that? That's good. Cool. Let's get a lead on there. Um, Actually, real quick, I want to try layering some more synths into this. Uh, I was watching, I watch Virtual Riot's streams all the time. And he was layering in some horns with his super saws. And I thought, that's a really cool idea. I have horns. I should try some horns. If contact ever loads. Yeah. Um, I've tried the East West library. I was doing the Composer Cloud for a while. Um, and I really just didn't find I was using it like ever. Other than I did like QL Space, their reverb plugin. But then I got uh, Valhalla Vintage Verb and I haven't touched it since. So. Um, so I canceled my Composer Cloud subscription and I'm just sticking with Contact. Even the basic factory library is just awesome. Uh, this brass ensemble just sounds huge. If I can actually get any of it to load. Hmm. Thank you. There we go. Why did it take that long? Okay. We have sound. <laughs> that sounds cool. Uh, 
I'm really going to cut this release short because I want it to sound nice and snappy. Uh, let's group these together. I'm going to move LFO tool from that poly track to the actual group. That's a cool layer. I like that. ready for a lead. kind of hitting on these little breaks, uh, some kind of lead, something that feels kind of analog. I might do like a mono legato synth. Rig up a nice little for one Adobe Master Tuning Max Source Mod Wheel, and we should have nice. Okay. And Mod Wheel is also going to affect LFO1's rate a little bit. That's cool. I like that. Um, and I might slow this down so I can effectively play some ideas in, uh, and then we'll speed it back up to 126 when I feel like I've got something I like.
turn it into a cool idea. So I'm going to record in some really raw MIDI, and then we'll play with it from there, add some pitch bends and stuff. that last note but we'll fix that and I do want to do some huge pitch bends with this I'm gonna give myself a lot of room in the serum here I've got my mod wheel all rigged up, so I can just write in some fun automation in Ableton. Uh, in, the, in the clip editor here. Might speed this back up. I'm really not sure what kind of tempo I want to end up at. Oops, got to bring it back up after that. Still got modulation to add in here, so I'm going to bring in the mod wheel.
100% sold on that lead. I might go with something a little more rhythmic focused. Got that really nice backing track. Go back to these leads. See if they're still terrible. Yep, still terrible. Getting deleted. And what, what did this sound like? if we even wrote <laughs> in the same genre. might uh, forego that lead for now and instead do like some little sample hits in between. Um, in fact, let me get, get some of my splice samples going. Where'd, where'd you go? There you go. Um, nope, that's not going to be helpful. <laughs> I really like pulling samples from this one phrase that I've been using for like 10 different songs. It always has something, some vowel I want in here. Uh, Won't you wait? That's nice, right out of the gate. I didn't even have to pitch shift anything. <laughs> I don't mind that. Uh, <laughs> it's very rarely that easy. Yeah, I like these samples. Okay. And just a little bit of uh, micro pitch shifting on this. That's the right note, but I don't like that sample. There we go. Okay, let's see what kind of fun little snippets we have sitting in here. We have to wrap up in just a few minutes. I could push it a little bit. I have a lesson in about an hour across town, so. Uh, 
That's all just terrible. <laughs> I don't want any bass. Where'd my, uh, <laughs> I dropped my, this thing. Don't you wait for me, I need you to stay right there. That kind of thing. Uh, I'm just going to keep adding pieces until that feels like it's complete. Uh, and let's, just to feel like we actually accomplished something, I'm going to put together a little rough arrangement of things. Push this out eight bars. Get rid of this again. I'll probably grab it again later. Um, <laughs> Let's do some really quick transition effects because uh, those will like make or break your arrangement. I uh, usually just use operator for all this and you'll see how in just a second. Excuse the noise for a moment. There's 
a nice little sub drop there. We're going to duplicate that. Copy sub drop. And noise. Just going to be the same idea, but with uh, noise on a filter. And we're just going to open it up. Almost like a reverse symbol kind of thing. Cool. Um, let's spread that through the stereo spectrum a little bit. There we go. Cool. Uh, now we just need to make our chorus a little bit louder than the burst to make sure it hits really hard. Um, and let me organize this a little bit because stuff's kind of getting out of hand. Drums should be up at the top. Bass. Putting things in the right track. Okay. And we've got verse guitars should not be with the chorus synced. Okay, good. And the chorus rhythm guitar and the effects can go down at the bottom. Uh, chorus samples. And we are just going to take these. Uh, we can put the chorus bass in there. Nope. Nope. <laughs> not what I wanted. Thank you. Um, that's the one. I got the wrong one. Chorus bass. Let's go right there. Good. Okay. Just compress the hell out of it. And let's see what we got. This is something resembling a usable track, which is nice. That's pretty cool. So uh, that's it for today. I will be back on Wednesday at 9 a.m. Uh, to stream a little bit more. I might work on this song more. Uh, I also have been meaning to do a uh, like a mix breakdown of the Adesta record I mixed this year. Um, so I'm going to talk to them about uh, you know featuring one of their tracks on the channel and just kind of going through my mix, uh, how I. I uh, got the sounds we did with that record, which turned out really cool. Uh, they released it last month. Um, it's called Rotations. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, you should really, really check it out if you like Carnival, uh, Dead Letter Circus, Deftones, Nothing More, anything anything like that. Uh, progressive, heavy rock kind of thing. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Uh, so that is it for today, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you so much.